co-CEO of one of the most successful advertising agencies, the Creative Council. He has been awarded by CNBC with the Young Business Leaders Award and continues to inspire many entrepreneurs. With me on City of Dreams is Ran Noina. Welcome to City of Dreams. Thank you for having me. So you've made it big time in the City of Dreams, Johannesburg, but you're not from Johannesburg. You're from Israel originally, right? Yeah, I was born in Israel. Um, when I was five years old, we moved to Johannesburg, the City of Dreams. And uh, I mean, you say we've made it, I think we're still making it. I think we're having fun and uh, we certainly haven't hit any destination point or made it in any form of it. So uh, you, uh, what I found interesting was I, I read that you started with this whole business venture of yours at the age of three, which is absolutely insane. Starting <laughs> a business, trying to make money at the age of three. Tell us a bit about Run as a child. So you've got all the dirt on me. Yes, you? I do. You, you, you did all your homework. <laughs> I tried to. Yeah. You know, I think I was one of those people that was born as an entrepreneur and uh, I was always looking for the way to make money. At the age of three, like, like you said, I cut out an old calendar, I cut out all the pictures and I went selling them door to door. Right through school, I had a whole lot of different business ventures. After school, I started to really have bigger business ventures. Um, I tried my luck at a job once. I lasted uh, the whole of four and a half months. I was a stockbroker. And uh, that really cemented for me that I wasn't supposed to work for anyone. And if I'm, if I'm ever going to do anything, I'm going to do it alone. And your parents, were they supportive? I mean, parents ultimately do play a big role in our dreams. Were you all supportive of your entrepreneurial ambitions? Yes, very much so. Um, my parents knew that I was never going to live with any type of rules or discipline or bosses. And they realized that I was going to be an entrepreneur. So even when I was down and out, and you know, if, as I know, you've done your homework, so you know that there were times where I was, I was really, really down and out. My parents were there. They supported me. They, they encouraged me. They encouraged me not to go and look for a job which seemed to be the easiest thing to do, um, and rather to carry on pursuing my dream of becoming an entrepreneur. Your partner, Gil Ovid, is also quite interesting and very inspiring as well. And uh, I learned that you guys also have been partners and friends for a very, very long time in business. And the first venture was IT. So tell us a bit about that, because you get our marketing venture, and advertising. And our first venture habits. was actually before IT. Okay. Our first venture was in matric, or even before matric, when we, it was in matric when we together did the Matric Dance After Party. That was our first business venture. Wow. We then bought, a, at the end of Matric, we bought a container of cosmetics together and went selling it door to door. Um, our current partnership has been, is about 23 years old, actually. Wow. Um, and we've made it and we've had some businesses which have failed together and we've had Creative Council and one or two other businesses that have really, really, really succeeded. So we've had a great partnership. Um, to the viewers out there, I think that uh, one of the, the best things that you can do in business is get a partner. Um, on the other hand, I'd like to say that if one of the worst things that you can do is get a bad partner. Sure. You mentioned failures. And I think that's an important thing that you mentioned because I think a lot of the time there's this mythical idea that people don't fail. And, you know, you said that you, you had a few ventures that have failed. Tell us a bit about those. So I believe that a person only learns when they fail. I believe that success teaches you nothing. So everything that I've learned has been as a result of failing, learning from my mistakes, getting up and trying again and doing something right. My biggest failure to date has been uh, myself and Gil had an uh, IT company in 1998. Sure. We started in 98. Uh, in 2001, the company went insolvent. We lost everything. Sure. Everything. Um, <laughs> we were unemployable because all we had on our CV was that we were failed entrepreneurs. We had no money. We had no real skills. We weren't accountants or doctors or lawyers. So we had no choice but to start again. And we tried for about seven or eight months before we got any type of traction doing anything. And can you imagine seven so, or eight months of doing nothing, having no job, having no income, having no money. Um, you go to meetings, you spend money, but you're getting nothing back so, in return. Uh, and then we started Creative Council, and we started Creative Council because we were desperate. But the rise up, I mean, the rise from being in a position where you've lost everything, you've been discouraged, how did you then elevate yourself and say, you know what, besides this failure, I'm going to continue trying? So I was faced with two choices. In fact, I was faced with no choice because my other choice was to go and get a job. And I knew that I could never, ever, ever survive in a job. And I must say, it was tempting. It was really, really tempting. You've had no money, you've had no income for six months, sure. there's no prospects. So you think to yourself, let me go get a job. I can earn 50 grand a month um, and that'll be my job. And that's, you know, I'll be an accountant or I don't know, I'll, I'll do something. But in the back of my head, I knew that wasn't an option. Sure. And I knew that the only option was actually to find a way to make it as an entrepreneur. And that's what we did. We 
we fell onto something out of desperation. We didn't want to start a promotions company, but it was the only opportunity that we had. And we figured either we do that or we don't know how we